How's it going? Good, thanks. Good, great. Hey, thanks uh, for uh, for speaking with me about Volition. Yeah, no worries. Hey, so hey, congratulations on this uh, project of, of yours. So could you tell me uh, what was the initial attraction to uh, Volition for you? Well, uh, the writers, Tony, Tony Dean Smith and Ryan Smith are, are old high school friends of mine. Um, and this is a script that uh, was in the works for the better part of 10 years. And so, so Tony kept uh, bringing me kind of new drafts and saying like, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Um, and uh, it, finally, <laughs> it finally happened, it took a while. But, uh, but I was always really intrigued, um, just even from the very early drafts of the psychological complexity um, of, of what goes on. And yet it's also quite grounded, like the characters, uh, certainly James, the role I got to play and, and the other characters are, are really quite grounded in reality. So it's not like a, um, you know, in terms of sci-fi, it's, it's not like it's hard to relate to these characters or that they're futuristic or something. It's all very down to earth people living through a very complex situation. So that was very interesting to me. Now you, you do a lot of supporting roles um, through your career. How, how was uh, being a lead, lead role in, the, in this one? This was, this was very uh, interesting. I mean, I, I've, I've played um, a lot of lead roles in theater productions. Um, and uh, so I, I kind of knew what it was like to, to carry a, a plot line as, as it were, but this was totally different than, than anything like that. Um, that I'd done before um, just because well obviously without giving away any any spoilers there's a lot of complexity to what happens with with James's character but um, what was intense with this particular role in filming was that he's pretty much in every scene of the movie um, and so just the 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 workload was just uh, way more intense than anything I'd ever done. And also we were on a very tight schedule. We shot in 17 days. We probably should have had double the amount of time. Um, so there was a lot of learning curve stuff going on there for, for me, uh, for just the, you know, the length of the days we were doing uh, and the amount of work being done every day, the amount of scenes, the amount of lines. Um, but uh, it was exhausting, but, but really great. This film has a very complex, uh, sort of like a, I want to say a time bending type of story. How was it, uh, how did the Smiths pull it off and how did you keep your headspace not to confuse yourself through all the different uh, timelines? <laughs> well, um, certainly a lot of credit goes to Tony, uh, the writer and director who always always knew exactly what was going on with every character in every scene um and even though it was so confusing i was amazed that he he never even had to think twice he was like nope this is what happened this is what's happening um for me as i was doing script work you know in the months leading up to shooting i was realizing i was going to need to figure out um some way to keep myself from getting confused so i actually created a whole a whole chart for james that kind of listed uh, in each scene where he was in an emo emotional state, physical state, um, you know, on a scale of one to five, and uh, as well as a bunch of notes on, you know, what had happened in the previous scene. And um, just so that I knew exactly where he was at for any, any scene we were shooting. And uh, I was really grateful that I, that I did that because it helped a lot in shooting to just be able to drop into exactly where I needed to be. That's that's ironic. It's it's like your character dropping notes for himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Actually, dropping notes for my future self. Yeah, it, it does kind of <laughs> line up. <laughs> you're uh, you're very familiar with uh, action scenes because of all the different movies and TV shows that you have done before. Um, could you talk about doing action in this one? And did you do your own stunts? Yeah, I'm proud to say I did do my own stunts for this. Um, and uh yeah it was fun and we luckily um some of the some of the other actors like alex ponovic who i had uh, some some pretty great fight scenes with 
Um, he's got a lot of experience. He's actually an ex-boxer and, uh, and he does lots of action stuff. And he was more experienced with fight stuff than I was. So he was able to give me, you know, tips on, on some of our fight stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I've always been kind of a rambunctious kid that liked to throw himself around. So it was, it was a bit of a return to, to youth to kind of throw myself across motel rooms and stuff like that. It was actually really fun. Did, did you do, have to do any special prep work before the, the filming like this? Uh, no, there wasn't any, any like physical prep work. It was all just kind of, um, you know, we'd block it on the day and, and figure out the choreography or whatever. Um, so it was all kind of done on the fly. How, what, what would you describe the Smith's, uh, you know, um, directing style um, for a film like this? Well, um, so Tony, Tony was directing and um, Tony is a very calm, he's a very calm demeanor, but he, he's a great leader because um, despite the calmness, he has control of the room, which I think is, you know, a great leadership quality, um, but not super common. But the other thing that both Smith brothers have going is they have the driest senses of humor that, and I, I've known a lot of people with dry sense of humor, but I think they have the, the very driest ones I've come across. Um, and, you know, on a shoot like this where it's, it's uh, mostly pretty heavy material, it, um, it's also confusing, we're on tight timelines, it needed to move quickly. I think the fact that Tony has such a great sense of humor was was actually key in just setting the tone on set and and everyone was just despite the the focus and the hard work was in a really good place and I think Tony um, set that tone which which made the shoot um, a fantastic experience. Excellent. Now you you already mentioned about Alec working with Alex but what about the rest of the cast? What well, what's so enjoyable working with them? I mean it's a small independent movie so I'm guess you guys got close with each other. Yeah. Yeah. It, everyone, this was a really, really beautiful experience for the people I got to work with um, in the cast and the crew. Um, but the cast specifically, the, um, these are some of Canada's best actors, like the Cassini brothers, John and Frank, um, um, Bill Marchand, who plays my, my foster dad. And of course, Magda Afinovich, um, who, who plays the romantic uh, lead, um, man, everyone was so, so generous. I mean, this wasn't the easiest shoot. It, like I said, it was on a very tight timeline and, you know, the budget was low, so we didn't have the usual kind of comforts and amenities that a regular shoot would have. Um, but because it was a passion project, everyone believed in the script. And so everyone, everyone started to feel, it started to feel like a family. People, um, you know, no one was pulling rank. No one was, uh, you know, saying, oh, that's not my job. Everyone was just pulling together. And, and, and uh, even though we were working very hard, everyone was just, just focused and having a good time. And, uh, and so that, yeah, it really felt like family, which was part of why it was so great. Excellent. Well, let, let me start wrapping things up uh, with you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your career, which, which is kind of funny. It's because you, you end up doing a lot of like, sci-fi fantasy comic book you know shows like arrow supernatural charmed or even in your earlier career with smallville how did you end up on on these shows i mean if i feel like i should be talking to you at some comic con <laughs> i you know i i don't know exactly i mean um i'm based in vancouver and and a lot of what's shot up here is uh has been in the kind of comic book realm and the, and the WB and stuff like that. Um, also for some reason, I, I get cast as a bad guy a lot. I, I think I'm a pretty nice guy in real life, but, uh, there's something about maybe how I look on camera or something, um, that casting directors think, Oh, he's evil. Um, and it's weird cause I also do theater, but when I do theater, I'm usually the romantic lead. Um, in most of the roles I've done. So it's, it's kind of fun and actually kind of nice to, to go to film TV and then get to play these outlandish uh, bad guys. So yeah, it's actually really nice. Could, could you remark on 
Um, the, the biggest bad guy role that you played was a murmur on Arrow. Could you remark about the experience on being on Arrow for so many episodes? I mean, that, that was a really big role for you. Yeah, that, you know, I didn't know it was going to uh, be such a big part of that season. So that was like a really nice surprise. And that, that role was a cool challenge because even though, um, uh, you know, it had quite a presence on, on that season, I didn't say a single word. Murmur obviously is sewed his own mouth shut. So he's not, he's not saying anything. And so that was an interesting acting challenge to figure out this, this character still had to be very intimidating. Um, and, and I'm not, I'm also not like, I'm not a huge muscly guy. So, um, so I had to figure out how to create this very intimidating presence with just, you know, physicality and, eye movements and head movements and all that kind of stuff. And so that was, that was a really interesting uh, challenge. Absolutely. And uh, one, one more thing that I, I, I want to uh, ask you, I know it's a, it's an obligatory question to ask during, and it's weird to ask during times like this, but do you have a uh, upcoming projects for yourself? Is Vancouver starting to open up for uh, back, back to work? It's very slowly starting to open up. We're starting to tape our first, auditions um but uh i mean creatively I, i'm i'm fortunate that i i've split my career between music and acting um so actually this this time has been very music focused for me i've i've just recorded a, a new solo acoustic album um called ghost light sessions which i which i put out a couple weeks ago and um so i feel very lucky to have this whole other creative outlet in my career which i can still work on i can still write songs i can still record um so i've most of my focus has been on music stuff but uh, but yeah the industry's starting to open up so hopefully um new opportunities will start to arise excellent well hey congratulations once again for volition and uh, hey thank you thank you for speaking with me i appreciate okay. it yeah my pleasure thanks so much